Hello everyone, welcome to Connected. Another Saturday, we're here to connect with a new guest and talk about a new topic. I am talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I hope you had a great week and you're getting ready to enjoy your weekend. Also remind you that you don't only see us through the Abia Yellow channel, but also through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. a true animal lover. She dedicates her life to maintain active her passion for animals. Wild animals, farm animals, pets, you name it. Hayden Sataro, she takes time, money, whatever it takes in order to make these connections with animals. She travels around the world, always looking for new experiences and for new connections with animals. Before we dive into Heidi's experiences with animals, we are going to get to know her a little bit. Let's meet Heidi Setaro. Heidi Setaro was born in La Paz, Bolivia. She grew up there and right after graduating high school, she moved to the USA to pursue a bachelor's degree in fine arts at the University of Boca Raton. Since a very early age, she felt and she cultivated a strong connection with animals. Today, she spends her free time and invests her finances on maintaining this connection with animals by traveling all over the world seeking to have these unique experiences. There are no obstacles or distances for this true animal lover. She has been a vegetarian for 15 years and she has spent the past 18 years with the sweet companion of two winner dogs, Winnie and Lucy, and her cats, Maggie, Gino, and Yoshi, which are all in heaven now. Heidi made sure they had a beautiful experience in this world from the beginning to the end. Nowadays, Heidi lives with her husband, David, and their baby, Bruno. It is my pleasure today to introduce a true animal lover, Heidi Setaro. She's talking to us all the way from West Palm Beach, Florida in the US. Heidi, welcome to Connected. I am so happy to have you here today. Let's go ahead with the first question. Tell us please when and how did you realize that animals would be such an important part of your life? Absolutely, Fabiana, thank you for having me in your show. It is my pleasure. Well, it's more so an image that created an impact in my life. And it is when I was about five years old, I walked into the kitchen and I saw this chicken laying in the kitchen counter, dead, obviously, with a head and a face. And I just didn't know what was happening. I told my mom, mom, what's that? And she said, well, that's meat. That's what we eat. That's a chicken. And I said, you mean this is the animal that I color in my coloring box? She said, yes. So I felt incredibly sad and I knew right then that I was connected to this animal and I, I just couldn't be part of that. So I knew that all these animals felt very important in my life. Right. <clears throat> So I am assuming you also grew up with pets in your house and that also that's another way to kind of like develop this compassion toward animals. So besides your pets, which was the first animal you had the chance to be with, whether this is a farm animal or a wild animal? Of course, back when I used to live in Bolivia, we had a house in the lake, in Titicaca Lake, and we used to go there and spend weekends, sometimes full weeks. And some of the workers that stay there had their animals in our lot. So I would see calves or lambs, piglets, 
So I was very intrigued by them and I would love to go see them and feed them and touch them and just see how different one from the other would be and feel and the noises they would make. I loved it. It was so cute to me to hear those little noises. So I love doing that. I love going to the lake house and be a part of, of this experience because, you know, it's something you don't see in the city. Right. And it's really you were a really lucky girl because if i think nowadays most of the kids they don't have the chance to have this experience to uh share time and to you know um approach these animals in that way they kind of like you think they think about meat coming from groceries or they think of animals only on tv documentaries and i think that that's such an important um, detail, right? To have that when you're growing up, to have that connection, to be able to share time with animals, it makes a complete change. So Haiti, okay, so now we're talking about back in the days, Bolivia and everything. So now that you are a grown up and you have your own time, you have your own money and you can do whatever you want with it. I know that you spend your time and your money traveling to places where you uh, are able to actually have this type of experiences with other animals. Please tell me about Africa. How was that experience for you and how did it impact you? Of course, one of my biggest dreams and my long-term dreams have been to go to an African safari. One of those that you get from a um, National Geographic magazine and you see these jeeps with all these giraffes and different animals just going in front of the jeep. I didn't even know that that could be real. So I book tours in safaris. So we went to National Kruger, uh, National Kruger Park and that's where we spend an entire day. Uh, also, we went to another safari where you could see hippos and water animals. But the first day, obviously, is where you see all these animals that you always wonder how they are in the wild. I remember we were just going on the Jeep and we see this whole family of elephants and you see mom and dad and baby and cousin and uncle and you see all these animals just walking in front of you and you hear them and, and, and they're just so close that it's it's just a static to me. Just I was static and to say I was recording this with my cell phone. And obviously I didn't want to watch this through my phone. So I just kept the phone like that and I just started enjoying and seeing them and just see the whole cross and see any animal that we could see on our way. We saw several animals. We saw giraffes and we saw antelopes and different kinds of zebras and uh, buffaloes. And also, you know, it is very hard to see lions in the wild. And you're not always as lucky, they say, when you are in Kruger, you will see lions. But we were chasing them for about two hours. There's other jeeps that are part of the experience. So they kept saying, they're north, they're south, they're east. Go there, go there. So we're chasing them until we finally got to a place where there they were, two lions. We, as soon as we arrived, we just had eye to eye contact and he just stood there and looked at us and I'm looking at this lion and oh my god it was just breathtaking I was paralyzed I think my, I stopped breathing just for a second to be able to see one of these <laughs> oh, animals yeah. totally in the wild and then he just walked to his mate and they both lay down and we were there for a long time then we went back into more animal findings and searchings that day after that experience, I decided once the tour was over and we went on two safaris, I decided to go to a private uh, place in South Africa where I researched that you could be and interact with lions. Oh, who wow. own acres and acres of land. And they started by rescuing lions and they brought them home and they rescued them, they saved them. And now they have 16 lions, they have about three tigers and a leopard. So they, this is their home. This is not a park. This is not a zoo. This is their home. They have a lot of land. It's in the middle of the jungle. So the animals have plenty of space and they're very well taken care of. So I decided to go there for two days. We'd stay in a chalet, which was with glass around, so you could see all the lions around. As soon as I arrived, I arrived to the place, you could hear the roaring. 
and you could see this <laughs> the magnitude of their sounds because they're all roaring, they're all doing their own thing, and you could you could even see them mating at times because there's times where that's all they do all day, and you learn a lot about them. So one one day, one morning, I spent the majority of, of, of the morning and part of the afternoon with the babies and the youngsters. I fed them, I played with them. I remember I have um, an instance where I'm playing soccer with them and they're playing with me with the ball. And they're very <laughs> intense. You would think they're babies and they are harmless, but they're not. They actually bite you really hard, almost to tear a little bit of your skin. And there's, their nails are like little knives. So I had bruises everywhere. Obviously, nobody warned me not to come with shorts or a tank top. So like a good Floridian, I go there with shorts and tank top nonetheless. So I was, I had a lot of in injuries. I, I was severely bitten, but I liked it because I was having fun. I fed them. Each baby had to be fed three bottles. So while I'm trying to feed two at a time, this one just bites my finger and the blood just starts shooting. And I'm like, okay, I don't care. I need to feed them because they're, they're, they're making this noise and roaring and telling you, give me my bottle. Because, you know, they're all hungry and they're all baby. So it's just awesome. Okay, so then I went with the bigger lions. And I didn't know what to expect. I went in, I started playing with them. It was very strange to me that these lions, not only they were sharing rooms with tigers, but also with dogs. There were two Great Danes there and two Jack Russells. And apparently the Jack Russell was the king of that whole area. And it was very strange because they were like best bodies, this huge lion with this little dog. So I started playing with the lions and they're giving me high five, you know, and they tell you don't touch them like a dog because they're not a dog. You need to rub them under their chin and, and massage them, you know, different way of interacting than you would with a dog. So I started playing with them and I was probably two hours there. I had a, a moment where I went on my knees and I was playing with both the male and the female and we're both talking to each other and looking at each other. And uh, at one point I got up and I was a little bit tired, so I went back and the male lion just came to me and bit me in my legs so hard. I did not expect this. I said, okay, you okay. can't panic. I had to literally open his mouth and just push him away from me. And I said, oh my God, I'm injured. But everything is fine, nothing is happening here because he wasn't doing that viciously. If he was, then I wouldn't have a leg. He was playing and that was right. his way of telling me, why did you stop? We're playing here. It's just like, you know, you're playing with a dog and then the dog comes and bites you and like, why did you stop? So it was right. such an experience to me. And even though I have a scar and I couldn't walk that day of the pain, I have a scar proudly and, and it is my mark that I was with lions in South Africa. So I love it. It was amazing. Every Everything about that experience. They're, they're very majestic creatures and you feel very humble and very vulnerable when you're in front of them. Something out right. of this world. How intense was this just to have the actually the experience of feeling his strength? Just a little bit, I can only imagine. Well, I'm glad you're fine. And um, what leads me to the next question? Please tell us about the experience in China when you went to meet with pandas. Of course, I saw online that there is a panda reserve that you could volunteer at and be able to interact with pandas to feed them, to wash them and just be part of their day to day world. So I said, oh my God, I'm so going there. So I got everything ready and I went. I went on my own. There was no tour involved or anything. So first they sent me all this paperwork I had to fill, fill out saying I'm healthy, I don't have any animals, meaning any any animals that could harm the pandas. You had to be very clean, you couldn't be sick, and you had to make sure you pay for all of your expenses while you were there and to be able to be part of the reserve. I said, no worries, I'm going. So once uh, I arrived, I realized that the day prior there was an earthquake in Chengdu, which is the oh. main uh, home for the pandas in China, Chengdu, the province of Xinjiang. So I was there and I was devastated because I came all the way from the US 
all the way to China to learn that I wasn't able to go to the reserve and volunteer. So I said, this is not possible. I didn't sleep that night. And I was waiting for a phone call when it finally came and they said, you can go, you can, you know, it's, it's open again. So I went and I did spend there for two days. Unfortunately, I couldn't be with the big pandas like the plan was because of what happened. They were a little bit disturbed and a little bit scared because they're very sensitive animals. Pandas are extremely Aww. sensitive and they were feeling the earth moving. And this happened years before in Chengdu. So I did spend time with them. I saw a mama bear with their four cubs and they were all playing and rolling. And it, they don't even seem real because you know you don't see pandas very much. So they seem right. like those little stuffed animals that are not even real. It's almost like if you see a unicorn. So then after that, I, I went and spent some time with an eight month baby, which I was able to hold and feed. And uh, I remember when I was holding him, his name is Cheng Zhuang. I was feeding him and I was looking at him, how pretty he was and his paw and his little gummy thingies were so soft and his nails were gigantic. And here I am <laughs> kissing the panda, going nuts at him. And the Chinese lady goes, no, 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 no kiss. I'm like, oh yes, yes, kiss. This is a one time in, you know, one time in, uh, in my life that I'll be doing this. But that time that I had with him, and you're limited of how long you could be with the baby. But I think they saw that I was just in heaven, that they left me longer with him. So it was adorable. This this big ball, it's big, you know, it's, it's not, you would think eight months old, but it is a big bear. And I, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I, I was there for two days. The area where they are is beautiful. It's completely similar to the wild, their nature. I learned so much about their behavior, their be behaviors and how they reproduce because, you know, this reserve is there to make sure that they continue with life because or else they'll become extinct. Right. Such a beautiful experience. And Heidi, I know that, of course, as an animal lover, you are a vegetarian. And I also have seen that you also travel in the U.S. in order to visit farm animals. Tell us a little bit about those uh, experiences you had. Yes, absolutely. There is this place in California called the Gentle Barn, which uh, it's a home for all the animals that were mistreated or they were disposed of. So I wanted to visit because I kept following their stories and each animal there has a story, something that you cannot imagine. So I went there and I was able to be with this goat that this goat just talked to me the whole time I was there. She kept putting her face against my face. His forehead, her forehead against my forehead. She just <laughs> hugged me. We have a picture where she's hugging me and you know how they go with both legs like that. It was just incredible. And I've seen cows and I brushed the cows and turkeys and just when you're with them and they're talking to you, it's, it's, it's something magical. It's something that only if you can communicate with any animal you would feel or else you would look at them as this is food. They're not food to me. They are no different than a dog or a cat. It's exactly the same, any animal. And also we went to this other place that it is a home and a sanctuary for animals that participated in movies. And one of these wow. animals that I had the pleasure to meet was the horse from the movie El Zorro. And the story behind him is very sad. He did not want to act. He was forced to act. He was tired of all this filming and shooting because I'm not, as you know, because you're on TV, some of the shooting take days. So each right. animal has a story. There was also the um, monkey of Mr. Doolittle with uh, Eddie Murphy. So I met him too mm -hmm. and I met many other animal actors that retire in this place. But it is very sad because these were animals that grew and were raised to be part of shows, to be part of acts. And just like some of right. the places that I visited in the US and I went to this place where it's a sanctuary for wolves now, you be amazed to hear the story of each one of these wolves and how they look so pretty on a calendar and they use them for pictures, they use them for movies, using for shoots, but 
once they're no longer pretty or they no longer work or they no longer want to work, they dispose of them. They get rid of them, they kill them or, you know, right. they get thrown away. And that's where these places come and rescue them. And each one of these animals have a name, has a name, I'm sorry, and a story. So it's just, you know, heartbreaking, but at the same time, you're happy that they're happy now and they're retired per se. So all these places I love to visit, I love to go anywhere all over the world to be able to see them close up. Obviously in our day-to-day -day lives and in our the cities that we live, it, we are very limited to what we can see. I don't like to see animals in zoos or in shows. I don't like any of that. I don't I don't even photograph with animals that have a chain or have something in their ear or neck. I don't like that because right. that brings a story to me. If I'm going to photograph an animal, if I'm going to be with an animal, I want it to be natural and when they're relaxed and happy. So to me that's right. that's that's an experience I just can't describe. Heidi, I love your stories and we're gonna go to a fast cut. We'll be right back with the last question for you. People at home, we'll be right back. Welcome back, my beautiful audience. I am happy to have here today Heidi Setaro, a true animal lover that travels the world in order to meet beautiful animals, either in the wild or farm animals. We have the last question for you, Heidi. And, um, after everything we've seen and you know when we talk about animals there is this feeling of compassion that I feel like we have to kind of um, maybe kind of like invest time in order to feed it so you know it grows in our hearts what would be your advice about animals for the coming generations or even for the parents that right now are you know raising kids Of course, we have to be aware of what we have and appreciate because many of these species are becoming extinct and uh, they're not appreciated, they're not respected, they're not loved. So my advice is to respect them, to help them, to make them part of the world, to make them part of the circle of life that we are all involved. But that circle of life should be a circle of life, a circle of love and a circle of compassion appreciate what you have because you don't know how long you'll have them for right and also how would you what, what would you say that is the best activity in order to um like like fuel that flame in our hearts because you know nowadays it's a lot of technology we have works jobs schedules and we just live towards you know trying to survive and have the best life and provide the best life So what would it be like as an advice? What do you think it could be? You know, maybe some people cannot take a trip and go to China or, you know, but that's not really what you have to do. In a, in a smaller scale, what would you recommend for people to be, to be able to do the connection? There are many places that you can spend your time and give it to an animal. Even if it's in someone's home, even if it's at, um, In, in the outdoors, you see a bird, you see a cat. If you look at your surroundings and you stop being so glued to your phone and so glued to your routine and you go a little bit further and you see the beauty that is outside, like you go outside in the yard and you see a bird and you see a flower and you see whatever it is, live that experience, touch it, feel it, talk to it. Don't be so limited and have such a small mind to think that certain, animal, certain animals are food or certain animals are for entertainment or whatever it is, open your mind. And it doesn't matter, like you said, you don't have to go to different countries to see the beauty that it's around you and to respect that. That's, that's part of your life. Respect everything you have. Respect your dog, your cat, your friends, cat, whatever it is, just appreciate what you have because it's not only an animal, we are all part of that circle. So appreciate what you have, look more than just the screen of your telephone and see how beautiful animals could be and how they can impact your life. Right. 
Heidi, I definitely appreciate you and I love all the stories. It's really inspiring and also it's great to see that if someone else can do it, then so can he, us, whoever. If you do your plans and if you put a set a goal, then things are possible. Thank you so much for being here with us today and for sharing your stories. I hope you're always well. Mwah. Big kiss for you and until next time with me, I'll give you a little space so you can say hi to the audience. Thank you, Fabiana. Thank you, everybody who watched my story. Uh, you're welcome to follow me on social media. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time and the space to hear my stories. Peace for all of you. Thank you, Fabiana. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be in your show. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, Heidi. Thank you. If you'd like to know more about Heidi Sitaro and her adventures with animals, please follow her here. After listening to her stories and to, you know, realizing that going to these places and traveling and to, in order to have experiences with animals are a thing nowadays, it's possible to do it. These places are open for tourists to come and the fact that you go and you participate, it helps them sustain their, uh, their work their projects, which is actually save some animals from captivity or to keep them alive and reproducing. So if you have this connection with animals, if you feel that you are connecting the dots and you have the wanting, you know, that, that hope and that, or that need in your heart, make a plan, make things happen. As I always tell you, everything is on the tip of your fingers on the internet. Go there, check, and make a plan, things are possible if we do everything with, uh, with time and of course with coordination and preparation. I will see you again in seven days. If you know somebody that has a beautiful story to share, an inspiring project or is doing for something for themselves or for the world, don't hesitate and write me. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you. I'll see you in a week. Stay connected until then. Goodbye.